Have you ever been driving down the road in your Mustang and you hit a bump and the steering wheel jerks? Well, that's not supposed to happen. That's called bump steer. And at Steeda, we've got a simple fix to eliminate that. So what is bump steer? Well, quite simply put, if you're ever driving down the road in your vehicle, car, truck, SUV, and you hit a bump and your steering wheel moves, that is bump steer. You hit a bump and now your steering wheel moves. There's simple ways to correct bump steer. Now over the years, they've gotten better from the factory. But once you start modifying your vehicle, say lowering springs, it's one of the first mods so many customers do. Now you're changing your front end geometry and it's going to introduce more bump steer. That's where the Steeda Bump Steer Kit comes in. What happens is, is that when your lower control arm and your steering rack tie rod end are on different planes, when you go over a bump, there's going to be a change in your toe. That makes your steering wheel move. So what the Steeda Kit does is it replaces your outer tie rod ends of your steering rack and gives you an adjustable unit. So you can stack spacers and you can make sure your steering rack and tie rod end are completely parallel with your lower control arm. Now this is our brand new S650 kit and the whole kit is different. As with anything, when Ford changes a car, comes out with the new S650, they make things better. At first we thought they were using the spindles off the GT350 in the front, but they're not. So it required a brand new tapered stud. Now, some of the other kits on the market include just a bolt, and they make you drill out that tapered stud. Well, it's your steering. Ford puts a taper lock in this for a reason. You don't want it coming loose. So no expense is spared with this. We start off with 4140 chromoly steel. We then machine it to exacting tolerances we then send it out and get it heat treated. After heat treated, it goes and gets black zinc plated and baked to maintain the proper hardness that we spec'd out. Now we've been making these for the Fox bodies, to the new edges, to the S197s, S550s, and now the S650s. It is simply the best kit on the market. Like I said, you can't get any better than our stud. We also use lock nuts. Nylon locking nuts. Now the beauty of that is they're not going to come loose. We also use a hardened washer on top. Now as far as the spacers, you've got a bunch of different spacers here that you could stack. But then we've got these two high misalignment spacers. Why is that? It allows for additional articulation. So while your suspension is going up and down, it can actually go to a point where the spacer is gonna limit this ball from moving in its full range. These high articulation spacers actually allow the ball to pivot more so than these spacers on top. So that is something that up until a couple years ago wasn't standard in our bump steer kits. Now you can find it in all of our bump steer kits. Now, as far as your tie rod end, what attaches to your steering rack? We start off with billet 6061 aluminum, and then we drill and tap it with a left hand and a right hand thread. That means you can go ahead and adjust the length of this on the car. Now you'll see the wrench flats. We put that on a particular side. You don't need it as much on the new cars, but we want to get those wrench flats as far away from the wheel as possible so you're not dinging the inside of your wheels and you have the most room to work. We have a jam nut that's gonna go ahead and lock in your adjustment when you're done. And we use a high quality domestic rod end that's Teflon lined. Now that Teflon liner is gonna help keep it quiet, reduce any chance of NVH. So some other people, they use a steel on steel setup. It's a more racy design, but it's gonna create knockback. It's gonna make noise. These don't create noise. And like I said, they're Teflon lined. So who needs a bump steer kit? Quite honestly, you can tell, you're the end user. If you go over a bump or a pothole on one side of the road, does your steering wheel move a little bit? That shows that you can correct that by adding a bump steer kit. 
Now these are mostly found with people, like I said, that lower their Mustang or like to take it out there and autocross or track the car. But it's also a very important part for drag racers too, because you have a tremendous change in your front ride height when you launch your car. And typically speaking, your wheels might want to tow in or out. By having a bump steer kit and keeping those two planes parallel when you launch the car, it's gonna prevent the wheels from towing in or out. And as far as drag race is concerned, that's important because whether you're lifting the tires off the physical pavement or you're just extending the front struts, a change in tow is going to scrub speed, which is going to increase your lap time to slow you down. So important in drag racing, important if you lowered your car. Let's face it, if you road race or HPD your car, it's an absolute must have. The other thing to keep in mind, when you do do this, if you're not experienced with setting your own toe in the garage, you're going to want to get in alignment afterwards. But like I said, this kit works wonders. It's gonna greatly improve your driving experience. And once again, not give you a bump steer when you're going over bumps or uneven surfaces. So it's gonna give you a lot more confidence as a driver. They're 100% made right here in Valdosta, Georgia. And as all of our seat parts, carry our limited lifetime warranty. To show you how it is to install one of these kits, we're gonna head out back and we're gonna install this on our 2024 Dark Horse. Here are the tools required for the job. Start by removing the front wheels. Use an adjustable wrench to loosen the jam nut on the tie rod. Don't loosen it too much as you want to minimize the alignment changes when you add the Steeda tie rod. Then the 18 millimeter nut on top can be removed. Carefully use a hammer to knock the tie rod end loose. And you can now remove the OEM tie rod end. Just unscrew it and we're going to drop it on the floor. Get the new Steeda rod end in place, but not fully against that jam nut yet. The new stud can go into the spindle now and use a nut and washer to secure it in place. Using a wrench and a 19 millimeter socket, tying down the nylock nut. You may have to adjust the center of the heim joint to line up with the stud. This can be done with a wrench or a screwdriver. For our application, we use the largest spacer up top along with one of the high articulation spacers going against the rod end. Now, make sure you use the high alignment spacer against the bottom of the rod end and the rest of the spacers will go below it and secure it with the nylock lock nut. Now go ahead and tighten it all down. You're gonna to wanna to torque the bottom nut to 50 foot pounds. The top nut can now be torqued to 40 foot pounds. Go ahead and repeat that process on the other side and we'll get it over to the alignment rack to go over the basics of how to adjust your Steeda bump steer kit. Now that we're over here on the alignment rack, this is where you're gonna do your fine tuning and adjustment. Now, like we had mentioned, the goal here is to make your steering tie rod end parallel with this control arm here. As you can see, it's pretty close. Now to change that, you're gonna move spacers from the bottom to the top or vice versa. Now, to get the ultimate reduction in bump steer, the best method for this is to bring your car and have it on a set of rotating pads. This way, at static, eyeballing it with as parallel as possible, we're gonna go ahead and check the toe. Then what we're gonna do is we wanna compress the suspension by about an inch, check the toe it's going to have a slight change to it. Look at the difference. Now, move some spacers, typically from the top to the bottom, or vice versa, to make that toe change as little as possible. This is where you're gonna have some trial and error. Check it at static, check it at inch compressed. The least amount of toe change is gonna result in the least possible bumps here on your vehicle. One other thing to consider it is if you do have aftermarket ball joints on your car, where this ball joint right here is extended. It's gonna have this arm at a different angle. That's gonna mean 
you're not gonna have as many spacers on the bottom of the bump steer kit, so those are gonna go to the top. But it's important to use all of the spacers as long as you've got the thread showing through that nylon bottom lock nut. But as you can see, nice and parallel. We already did the one inch compression. This seems to have it where there's the least amount of toe change. So let's go out and see the difference. As you can see, installation was pretty simple. Now we do give you a wide variety of spacers, anything from 200 thousandths down to 60 thousandths. Now in our specific dark horse, with our dual ray lowering springs, that 200 thousandth spacer was used up top. Now if you're used to going to the track and changing your camber, this might be something you can do at home. Otherwise, we suggest doing it yourself and immediately take it to an alignment shop to make sure your toe is spot on, which is going to reduce bump steer, give you better overall feel driving your car. And if you're like us and like to push your car to the limits, it's going to give you a lot more confidence when you're going over uneven surfaces and throwing your Mustang in the turns. So hit like, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and remember, Stita, where speed matters. <laughs>